To the north of the Himalayas, the Nubra Valley in Ladakh has only been open to visitors since 1993. It takes several days of hiking to reach the village of Tangier. At an altitude of 3,800 meters, the temperature drops to 20 below zero Celsius in winter. Are you hungry? Yes. I'll give you some tsampa. enough to eat? When you're at the monastery, learn your lessons well. You'll be far from your family, and your duty will be to learn. If you don't learn well, you'll be sorry. I'm going out to play. Don't stay out too long. And keep an eye on the goats. Orgon is nine years old. Soon he will leave his valley and go to a distant monastery, very far from Tangier, where he will begin a new life, that of a Buddhist priest or lama. Thirty families live in Tangier. They all raise sheep, goats, and yaks. They sell the skins, the wool, and the butter to the people in the valleys below. During the winter, when the land sleeps, carting takes place. They spin the wool to make clothing and blankets. At this altitude, wood is a rare commodity, and the primary concern is to feed the fires that heat the houses. Orgon's cousin, Norbu, is 19 years old. Along with his mother, he collects dried yak droppings, which they use for heating. Norbu's mother, Dolma, is like most of the other women in the village. She carries the pain of her son's absence inside of her. Dolma has six children, all of whom live with her, except for the youngest. He has been studying at a school of Buddhist philosophy in southern India for the past three years. In these remote villages, there's a deep respect for tradition. The eldest always inherits the land, and the youngest enters a monastery. I remember the day he left very well. It was in September. I was working in the fields at the other end of the village when the Lama came to take my child. I didn't even have time to say goodbye to him. He was already at the other end of the valley when I heard he had left. I always knew my son would leave one day, but I didn't know when. I wanted to send him presents like cheese and dried apricots. I also tried to send him some salted butter, but they told me that southern India was too far from Tangier, and since we have no money, we couldn't send him that either. The 
religion is Tantric Buddhism, full of demons and magic. For 10 days in January, they celebrate the Tibetan New Year, the Losar. Young riders from Tangier participate in a special ritual. This is the effigy of a mouflon, a wild sheep sacred to the people of Ladakh. It protects them from evil spirits and must be destroyed for the year to begin favorably. The stakes are high. The winner will be considered the best rider in the village. This year, Norbu is the best of all. Here it is not green pastures, but the more distant tamarisk brushwood that is most sought after. Long distances have to be covered. The livestock has to be herded higher into the mountains to find food. Norbu and Orgon are used to tending the animals together. Their two families have always been close, and the two boys were raised as brothers. Look, Norbu, I'm going to win. Yeah. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you lost again. No, you see, I didn't touch the pebble. I can still play. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it. <laughs> But there are lots of boys in the village who don't want to become lamas. Why do you want to? I have lots of friends who want to go to the monastery too. Who? Dosin, Doji, Jiman. Is that why you want to go? Because they want to? Mm hmm What do you want to do later on? I have lots of ideas about the future, but what I'd like most is to become a singer. But I don't know if I could ever really become a good singer. Tonight, to celebrate the Tibetan New Year, there's going to be a big dinner. Orgon's mother and her youngest daughter have to cook the stupa, a mystic soup with balls of flour in it. In one of the balls, salt is added for the unstable. In another, rice for the pure, pepper for the erudite, and many other symbolic ingredients. This year, the meal will be held at Orgon's mother's house. It will also be the occasion for the entire family to get together one last time before the youngster leaves the village. When the Lama told me Orgon would get a good education, I thought it would be good for him to go to the monastery. In Ladakh, the Buddhist philosophy school has a very good reputation. I have six children and my husband is dead. If one of my children gets a good education, it will be good for the whole family, since he'll be able to help us financially.
Orgon is seated in the center, a place of honor. A child who enters a monastery is a sign of hope. As a lama, he will become a guide for the others. Through his prayers, he will assure each member of his family a better life in this world, as well as their future lives in the beyond. I found this ash. It's strange. It means I have to go more often to look for wood. You have to look after your family more. Look, I found a white flower. I thought the stupa was delicious because there was a lot of pepper in it, and pepper makes the stupa taste better. In my ball, there was some very bitter juniper, but that also means I'm a good man. It's only natural. I'm the oldest of all of you. At Orgon's uncle's house, everyone dances for the spirits to win them over so that the mountains permit the rain clouds to get through. This year, the barley, wheat, and fruit harvests were small, and so they are banking on the gods' clemency. The inhabitants of Tangier have never known famine. They have managed to retain their quality of life thanks to a special kind of marriage. Here, a woman can marry two brothers. This union, known as polyandry, has been officially outlawed since 1941, and it is also forbidden by the Buddhist religion. However, it's still occasionally practiced, especially in these isolated regions. It's simply not discussed in front of strangers and only talked about in secret. Up to now, it was a good thing for two brothers to share the same woman, since in that way, no field, not even a stone, would leave the family. Family unity was maintained in this way. The earth, the stones, the entire property, even utensils, jewelry, and clothing, everything stayed in the family, without having to share it with anyone else. But today, people have become more educated and more individualistic. Nowadays, brothers want to have their own land and their own wife. Every village has a monastery, always located at the village's highest point. Only one monk lives in the Tangier Monastery. Once a month, he has to visit each family and recite the mantras. Otherwise, he never leaves his rocky home. The monastery consists of several hectares of land which the villagers are required to cultivate. Every day, they take turns bringing the monk water and wood. The monastery is open to the public. Anyone can come at any time. The Lama is a father to everyone and a spiritual guide who has all the answers. So you want to become a Lama. You know, if you do become one, you will have to leave your family and live in the monastery. But simply becoming a Lama is not enough. You must first learn to know Buddha and the religion, and you must conduct yourself well. If you can follow the rules of the monastery, you will have a harmonious life. You will feel very happy all your life. And I hope you will have good teachers to teach you our religion. 
Ki ala shi tit ko sa nong e. Wale. Bye, venerated one. Buddha himself said that to become a lama meant not being too attached to one's family, since this attachment perturbed the practice of the religion. And so, when parents confide their son to a master lama, they must begin to keep their distance. In the Buddhist tradition, the best thing that can happen to a child is to become a lama. Cricket is the favorite pastime here. Nobody knows the rules of this British sport, first imported into India, but that doesn't matter. They enjoy it immensely. Orgon is playing his last game. Tomorrow he will leave Tangier. His uncle, the caravaner, has to go to a village on the other side of the valley to sell some yaks. Orgon will take advantage of the journey to cross the Warila Pass and then go on to the monastery. Please, venerated one, I have to cross Warila with a boy who's going to enter the monastery. Tell me how my journey will go. This boy is very fortunate. Please. Tell me what you think about this trip. I have consulted my beads, and I see that your journey will go well. You may leave without fear. Thank you, venerated one. At this hour, the sun has not yet penetrated this side of the mountain. They don't know when they'll see each other again, perhaps in a year. During the journey, Urgan is accompanied by his cousin, Norbu, who watches over him. The Ladakis were a caravanning people. They would buy salt, jewelry, and furs in Tibet and sell them to the inhabitants of Pakistan. 
The frontiers, however, were closed, and ever since, there are only a few caravans like this one. The air becomes rare, and each step becomes heavier. The goal is to reach the Warila Pass. Its summit seems to be waiting for them, and at the same time, it appears unattainable. A glacial wind makes things even more difficult. A stable at an altitude of 4,700 meters serves as a refuge for the night. A fire keeps them warm and restores their energy. Bergen, you are going to become a monk, and you mustn't be frightened by such things as demons. Have you heard about this man named Norgal from the village of Sakti? Last year he was in the mountains when he saw a yak with a strange mount on it. This ghost-like figure followed him relentlessly. He followed him through the mountains, and Norgal walked for such a long time that he got lost and ruined his shoes. Night had fallen, and he was all alone. Nobody knew where he was. But he managed to find his way back. So, Ergen, now that you are going to become a lama, you too will feel alone and lost in the monastery. You must show courage as well as strength, and you must not be afraid of being alone or of invisible beings. Ah. <laughs> 